The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. In today's episode, we're going to be working with an antique piece of technological history. Ooh, what is it? What is it? What is it? It's the Atari Video Music. Ooh. Ever hear of that? I have not. What does it do? Well, it came out in 1976, so it's actually before the old Atari game console. Okay. And you plug your hi-fi stereo system into it, and it creates visualizations of the music on a television. Okay, so, but not like a music video like we would think like on old 80s MTV. This was more of like graphic interface. Yeah, kinda. more like you've got Windows Media Player and it's going full screen and making a bunch of weird patterns okay. to the music. So back in 1976, that was completely unheard of. So it was even, well, even then it was still kind of a niche product. It didn't sell very well, okay. which means it's actually really sought after and rare. Anyway, so there's this guy I know and uh, it's actually the same guy who had us do the Dreamcast project. Okay. And he has one of these Atari video musics, but it doesn't work. <gasps> we get to fix something? Yep, he wants us to fix it. All right. So we're gonna have to try to find the schematics, which could be tough. Hopefully they're out on the internet someplace. Come well, on, people uploading things to Google. <laughs> then we'll uh, do a teardown of it, show you what's inside of it, so you can get a glimpse into the 70s. And then we'll try to get it working again. Let's get started. Amazing Hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspire Designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bat down the hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. This is the Atari Video Music, a pretty rare item from the 1970s. So what it did was it took your music, such as your Led Zeppelin or Beatles or ABBA, and it would visualize it on your television. So let's take a look at the back. You had this really interesting looking power <laughs> cord, certainly from the 70s. The transformer's in here, apparently. It's got a good amount of weight to it not grounded because who needs that? It's the 70s. Uh, actually, that's kind of hard to believe that it's not grounded because there's exposed metal. Well, whatever. Anyway, you'd pipe in your high fidelity music here and then it would output a video signal over this cable. This is the same type of RF cable that would have been on the Atari 2600. So we may also try to add composite video to this as well. So it's all wood grain. This is actually just half inch pieces of wood. See, when real wood gets dinged up, it just adds character to it. Instead of like Ikea wood, when it gets dinged up, it just goes into the trash. So yeah, let's, uh, let's pop this sucker open and take a look. This is definitely the rarest thing I've ever taken apart. This isn't real leather, it can't be. I can't believe I'm gonna do this. Oh, it tastes like an old high school gym. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it. Oh, look at that, that's weird. There's a channel select switch inside the unit. <laughs> Why? Look at this, you would have had to stick a screwdriver through this hole to change the channel. That, that is nuts. But imagine like it's all dark, you know, you've got the lid on that I tasted. You can't see anything, you just kind of have to what did the instruction manual say? Just stick a screwdriver in there and like, and feel around, I guess. And it's not a clicky switch, so there's really no feedback that you've moved it. That's a file. Oh, look at this nice disconnect. That was connected before I was born. Well, it looks like almost all of these capacitors are bad. The electrolytic ones. Uh, electrolytic capacitors, which are the larger cans that have like aluminum, you know, around them. They're only really supposed to last like 10 to 20 years. Anything past that and they're basically on borrowed time. Uh, if you see like an old TV, well, no one's gonna try to preserve a TV. So if you see like an old arcade game with a rolling display or horizontal sync doesn't work, it's usually because it needs new caps. Because, you know, a lot of this stuff was just meant to be used for a few years. Make your money off of it, then get rid of it. But then people used it for decades. All right, we should be able to 
completely remove that. Look, they even textured the back of it. Look how much they cared. That was nice of them. Why are there three power leads coming from the transformer? Let's say 16 volts AC, 100 milliamps. Ooh, what a beast. So this is a um, custom Atari part. You can tell because of the number on it, the uh, C010280-03, that's your typical Atari 1970s numbering convention for a integrated circuit. Hopefully the chip is still good, but these capacitors are so wonky, I'm sure that they're probably the main culprit. That is bizarre, look at that. It's a flat ribbon cable and that's going to these capacitors. I don't think I've ever, ever seen something wired up like that before. And this must've cost a pretty penny, all these, look at these switches. So there's three banks of selector switches where only one is on. And then the final switch is a power switch. So, you know, a lot of times people be like, oh, things were better, built better back then. And well, they were. I mean, I haven't found anything glued together yet on this except for the panel I tried to taste. These capacitors with plastic shafts, that's pretty junky. I mean, I think you'd have a pretty difficult time finding a large capacitor like this with a plastic shaft. All right. So you select what type of patterns you want, and then you adjust them with these knobs. So it's mostly analog. Oh, there's like a quality control sticker in it. People that are probably long since dead. Custard and Polish, custom Polish. DA, dead on arrival, district attorney. Polish, a Polish district attorney. That's a clue. Oh, and then like the selector, like you should just have to stick the screwdriver up there. And have faith, man. Don't worry, you'll hit something. Wow, look at that. Big chunk of steel attached to wood. That's when they used to make things right. If I don't have to remove these buttons, I'm not going to. These switches are pushed up into them pretty far and it's old plastic and I want to crack it. Oh, we haven't even looked at the soldering yet. Oh, that's not too bad. Oh, wow, this is old enough that the Atari logo uh, it's not really legible, but I know that these words are uh, innovative leisure. That's what, that was their tagline back in the day. So here's what I think I'm gonna do for repair. I'm going to replace this socket and mark where zero is. Then this, this, basically all the electrolytics I'm gonna replace. Then we'll hook it up and see if we can get a signal. This Atari video music is 40 years old. These capacitors probably failed 20 years ago. So I'm gonna replace all of them, at least the electrolytic ones. And then the socket for the main integrated circuit, which looks to be custom, I'm gonna replace the socket as well because they're usually pretty beat up by now. Hopefully everything else is intact. This solder is very old. It was soldered back when Gerald Ford was president and I was a wee lad baby, or maybe not even born yet. This capacitor looks swelled up like a corpse at Christmas. 1,000 microfarad. I will replace it with a capacitor of equal value. <laughs> Buy one capacitor, get one free at equal or lesser value. Okay, so the arrow is pointing to ground on this capacitor, so whoop. If this is a real video music, it could be worth a lot of money. I'll give you $50 for it. What is this, pictures of people playing chess? Squirrels, you're fired. Wow, this old solder puts up no amount of fight coming out. 470, maybe we could sell these old capacitors on eBay, like authentic Atari video music capacitors. For sale at a great price. It's not original anymore, blah, blah, blah. I think this project, this, this Atari video music was quite the flop back in the day. Not enough people bought it to visualize their Fleetwood Mac. I'm also gonna check for any uh, cold solder joints or broken joints on all of the pads here. I guess I could just reflow them all anyway. Oh, look, one of them has been manually resoldered at some point, interesting. Actually, several things have, you can tell by the flux. 
or it could have been reworked at the factory. We'll never know. Clearly everyone that worked there is now, you know, dead. I did a test where I hooked the Atari video music up to a TV using the slider switch box, and we got a black image, which means it was producing video, but we didn't see anything. So I need to do a, a little bit more experimentation. I'm gonna hook it up to my oscilloscope, see if I can get some signals off of it. I also think part of the problem might be that I wasn't using music from the 70s, so I've got Fleetwood Mac going into it now. So I did have a schematic sheet. It's a little hard to read, but there are some, there are some waveforms actually indicated on it. Like clock is supposed to be here. That's good. Then there's a square wave here. So these are two square waves created by the op amps that represent the music. And then more importantly over here, there's two uh, crossover points. We're seeing this and this. Now if I hook up two channels, so this low here and these pulses here is an NTSC horizontal sync and color burst. If you look at the frequency of the square wave, we get, there we go, 15.7 kilohertz. So that is an NTSC horizontal television signal. So it's, the chip is definitely outputting a video signal. That's why we saw black on the screen, but there's something else preventing it from showing the shapes. I'm gonna do another test here. Okay, I have it playing some dumb modern music, specifically the milkshake song about the milkshake and... <laughs> <laughs> you can definitely see something happening. See the colors on the screen? So it's basically working very briefly and then caulking out. It could still be some bad caps. I will have to look into it. Could also be a faulty power supply. So it wants to work, it's just not staying on. So progress. I've replaced all of the electrolytic capacitors in the Atari Video Music and checked all the connections. We're still not getting a proper signal. We see it for a little bit, but then it goes away. So the next thing I'm gonna check are these two operational amplifiers. These are the things that actually take the music and turn it into a form that the main video chip can understand. So hopefully the problem is with one of these because we can find a modern day replacements for these op amps. The video chip, <laughs> pretty much unobtainium. So if we can't fix it with the op amp, we're not gonna fix it. I can only find one schematic and I had to paste it together because it was in two pieces. The resolution isn't very good. The text is not really legible, but I can see the op amps. And it conveniently shows what sort of waveforms you should be seeing at each one of the test points. So we can use the oscilloscope and see if the op amps are giving us the proper signal. That might help us trace what's wrong. The 3410 pin 10, let's see. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, we're getting something from that. Okay, now it looks like there's supposed to be a saw wave off pin five of the 3401. Oh, look, there's nothing on that pin. So it looks like one of these operational amplifiers isn't doing its job. I will swap them both out with modern day equivalents and let's see what happens. Okay, I've got the Atari video music hooked back up to my TV using the old RF switch box. Turn it on, we see nothing because there's no music yet. Let's try some Fleetwood Mac. How about Monday morning? Hey, it's doing something. All right, let's see, gain. Okay, that's just a gain on the volume. The uh, volume of the input, of course that matters as well. So if I turn it down, it'll go off. And it doesn't pipe the audio through the TV. The TV basically is just static. This is just a visualizer. Looks like you can change the shape, solid shape, shape with a hole, with a ring. Okay, looks like you can change the color a little bit. Contour, I'm not exactly sure what this one's supposed to do, if anything. Looks like you can just go auto, auto, yeah, all right. So it'll randomly pick what to do and change, yeah. Oh, oh, I get it. All right, so this, so one, one is one shape. Two, one is two shapes. Two, two would be four shapes. Eight, five. Okay, so that's the uh, multiplier. So two, two would be four, got it. 
Seems like the gain is the most useful thing. Well, that's interesting. Turn the gain up too high. See how these four shapes kind of invert into one shape? That one kind of looks like alien mouths talking like wah, 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 wah. You can make a Peter Gabriel video with this pretty easily. Give me steam. If what you real is make you real, real is anything you see. Get alive with the dreamers dream. <laughs> This is how Peter Gabriel made videos back in the 70s. Another piece of obsolete 70s technology brought back to life. Well, we did it. We repaired the Atari video music. Woohoo! Now we can rock like it's 1976. Do, 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 do. It's not really rock. Uh, yeah, it's not. I don't know, disco would have a good, would it have a good visualization? Probably. Maybe, I don't know. Boom, 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 boom. Staying alive. Right? So you restored it to its original functionality, but if you're gonna make it new fancy for modern 2015, what would you do? Well, you could replace the RF signal with a modern or more modern composite video signal. Remember, this has to plug into like one of those sliding switch boxes. You can't plug yeah. this into your video in on a modern TV. Hmm. Um, I've done lots of mods like those before in the past for old Ataris. Mm -hmm. It probably wouldn't have been a big deal to add to this. However, once I got it working, I didn't want to mess anything up. Okay. But maybe in the future, something like that could be available, you know, to all 10 Atari video music owners. Are there any cool classic electronic things you'd like to see us do teardowns on, or perhaps fix and get working again? Let us know on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TVHS. Where you can also read about our upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. Also, don't forget to send in your build ideas and teardown ideas to Karen via social media. We'll see you next time. Special effects. Super, super tiny, small. Ugh. Ugh. Ooh, tell me more, tell me more. It's the Atari. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thanks to Kesha or Kellis and the milkshake song, we can we can see something out of this. The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.